so if you could just before we start just say who you are on Google. Uh my name is Mauricia Miranda, but online I'm known as March. I work full time for Valkyrie Ray as her like content production person, I'm kind of like her Swiss Army knife. I also produce a podcast for a content creator named Hassan and another one named Will Neff. It's called Fear Ann. So. He gets a third of the revenue generated. Oh, that's fat. Shut up, it work. Go crazy, go crazy. <laughs> Those look incredible. I think when I was around like 17, I tested out of high school as a junior a year early. I told my parents, I'm going to go to community college a year early and I'm going to start, you know, get a head start on that because I think that just makes more sense. And then I got a job at a local land center and I dropped out of college <laughs> one semester in to like play video games. At this point, I was getting like burnt out on league. I'd been playing league for like, you know, four or five years and like barely like scratching like diamonds. So I was like, I'm probably not going to go pro this game. but. I got invited to a technical alpha of a game called Heroes of the Storm, a Blizzard version of League with like Blizzard characters. Um, and I was like, I can get started early, I'll go pro in this game. I didn't have a PC at home that was good enough to like stream or even like really game. So I would like work like my eight hour shift, like making like nine bucks an hour at this land center. And then I would like lock up the land center or like get off my shift and like go into one of the PCs and start playing Heroes of the Storm. And I started hearing about this like thing called Twitch and streaming. I was like, well, if I have early access to this game, people can't really like get the game, so they probably want to watch the game. So that's what I did. That's like, I would like get off my eight hour shift at work and then I'd stream for like eight to 10 hours from this game that was in early access. In a lot of ways, it was like a really difficult time because I worked for a boss who like was not supportive of like the gaming space at all. Like he, pro he promoted the land center as like a workstation, like place to like go like work at. And just like, that's cool, but 99% of customer base is coming in here to play League of Legends and Hearthstone every day, so like maybe cater to them. It became really apparent to me really quickly that like there's actually more money in like content creation and streaming, specifically for this game too, than there is in like playing pro in this game. So I actually had a lot of opportunities to like play with pro teams in that game. And then I would always be like, but my stream is kind of making me more money right now, and I'm like building my own brand, so I should probably invest in that. And so my dreams and aspirations like shifted from like, I want to be a pro gamer to like, I want to be a streamer. Cause I also saw how taxing like being a pro player was. So that's what I was like, yeah, I'm gonna just choose to focus entirely on streaming. Like just makes more sense financially. And it's like longevity. In hindsight, that was like the best decision I could have ever made because anybody familiar with like Heroes of the Storm, uh, Blizzard like pulled the plug on that game super hard. A lot of these like pro players that like didn't really like spend the time making their own like name for themselves as like streamers or content creators because they were focused on going pro in this game, now had nothing. Also, it sucked for me because it's like, oh, my game's dead, but at least I have like at this point like a thousand subs on Twitch and like I'm pulling like, a few hundred viewers and like I can at least like pivot that audience a bit to like figure out my next thing. My roommate um, and best friend Gabriel, he worked at the Land Center with me. He's been like so pivotal in like just my growth. The whole time he was also like hustling on the side too. And I was like, building my own thing as a streamer and he was building his own thing like making a name for himself, himself among esports circles and so we kind of like split off you know he went to go like start working for Team Liquid and move to LA I went full-time streaming route and then we kind of reconnected like a year and a half two years later he's like come move in with me move out of your parents house and that was ultimately what would lead to me like kind of getting that job at 100 Thieves and like my foot in the door in the industry because he was working at Team Liquid and then 100 Thieves, like Nate Shot came to him like early, like first employer, second employee, and poached him. They were, he was like, we need somebody to help us build content at 100 Thieves. So like my streaming was like, it was still paying the bills, but I was like looking for the next thing. I was like, this is like hard. It was a period of time in my life where like, I was pretty, felt pretty lost. I didn't really know, like I felt kind of directionless. Luckily, Gabriel at the time, my roommate, was like, hey, like 100 Thieves actually needs somebody to, um, live stream our League of Legends Academy games. And so he's like, so yeah, so I told um, my boss, my roommate like knows how to use OBS and live stream and like he's familiar with the whole space. And like, if you wanna do it, you can do it. And I was like, fuck it, I'm down. They had a content house here in LA where all like the players lived. And I would literally just be upstairs in the master bedroom <laughs> where I think Nate Shot was sleeping at the time. Um, in the master bedroom, like from a PC, they're like just hosting like the Academy games and live streaming them. Um, after that, 
they approached me and were like, well, do you want to help um, build this podcast that we're like doing? We're trying to do the Courage and HS show. Uh, there's a producer named Alex on it who basically needs a hand, like a right hand to like help build the podcast. And I was like, sure, let's do it. We were building that podcast, like Alex and I, <laughs> we would always be like, the compound's coming. It's like, it's in the works. One day we're going to have like a studio. We're going to get a dedicated studio space. It's going to be awesome. We're never going to have to like do this, like um, <laughs> build and tear down always. And then so sure enough, the compound opens up. We have this dope studio and then like two months later, COVID happens. We have a new name for the coronavirus. Coronavirus. The coronavirus. The World Health Organization has officially called it COVID-19. COVID-19. Coronavirus. COVID-19. 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 pandemic. So I got offered a job very soon after COVID, like full time at 100 Thieves as technical director. Everything live streaming, live production that we do would now be belong to me. But during the, the height of COVID at the beginning, the first like nine months, um, it was literally just like me alone in the compound. And then it was because of my time there that I kind of again like started just rubbing elbows with different creators. I had known of Ray obviously because I've been working there for a while. My roommate likes to say that I am like simultaneously like the most confident person he's ever met and the most insecure person he's ever met. So I have like random like crippling like social anxiety. And so Ray was one of those people that like I would see like walking throughout the content house every now and then and I'd like say hi but I never really like started a conversation with or like said much to. And she probably just knew me as like the guy who was downstairs like once a week like building a podcast in her living room. Gabriel, my roommate, had like helped her uh, in some of her content in the past. But one day, Ray, I guess, got approached by um, Corp's husband with an opportunity for her to play him. MGK wanted Corp's to do it. Corp's never shows his face, so Corp's was like, I'm not gonna do it. But Corp's was like, I have someone who will do it, and he was like, Ray should do it. Um, and so I think from the time that he approached Ray with that offer, like to do that thing in the music video, to when we were actually shooting, I think it was like a 48 hour window. And so she's like, okay, I wanna vlog this. And she's like, and I just kinda need like a team. So she hit up Gabe and she's all like, hey, like, would you be down to like vlog this for me? And then like kinda just come along with me? And he was like, sure. And then I was living with him at the time and he's like, hey, do you wanna come along with this? We need somebody to drive us and also just to have an extra set of hands and like just to come hang out because it's a cool opportunity. So I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, I'll go and I'll like, I'll take photos. I was like, I've never taken photos before this. I like had never taken like a single picture. I didn't even know how to use a camera. And the night before we were gonna go, I was out somewhere, I'm sure like drinking with friends or something. And we had like planned to pick Ray up from her house at like one or 2 p.m. So like at like noon or 1 p.m. it rolls around and I'm asleep in bed and Gabe walks in my room, he's like, yo, I'm gonna head out soon, we're gonna go pick up Ray, uh, do you wanna come still? I was just like feeling really, like especially insecure, and I was so hungover, I remember thinking that day, I was like, this close to being like, I'm gonna bail, like I don't wanna do this. And it's crazy to think that like, that decision to not bail opened up so many doors for me. So we went, and then I was like, I'm just gonna take as many pictures as I can, and surely some will be good, you know? Machine Kelly walks into the room, he's intimidating as hell, and he's just like coming up with the music video concept like on the fly. What proceeded after that was like five or six hours until like three in the morning of just like piecing together the most like random wild music video. The turnaround on the video was crazy too. And they were like, this video's gonna come out on like Monday, and we were shooting like on a Friday. Like it was gonna come out in like three days. So she wanted the pictures like I, I took a bunch of pictures and she was like okay well can we get those pictures in like a two or three days and i was like bet never used lightroom before in my life so i was like time to learn how to use fucking lightroom <laughs> so like i literally was just like up for hours and hours just like figuring out how to edit a picture so that it doesn't look like shit and it's like i'm doing it for one of the biggest streamers in the world it's like a great recipe for imposter syndrome i have these pictures that she's posting online that people are being like, this is a great picture, like this is awesome, this looks great, or it's getting like a good amount of likes, like at least as many likes as her other posts, if not the most likes out of any posts she's posted. And then there's like people in the comments being like, like even like career photographers in the comments being like, yo, these photos are great. Like, and in my mind, they're like, I'm like, they don't know I'm a fraud. <laughs> my experience 
between then and now has been kind of me trying to like prove to myself that like I do deserve that chance. A lot of people have told me, you know, like that might be the case that there are other people that are capable, but there's a reason why, you know, people have asked me to like kind of come along. Yeah, it's all about, gotta be like a, a facilitator of vibes, you know? <laughs> people just wanna work with like people they like being around. That's something that Ray actually mentioned to me when we went to Coachella uh, this last year. She brought me along weekend one with her and all like her friends when they went. I'll never forget that she said, she's like, it's so nice that you're just friends with all my friends so that like whenever I need you to jump into action and take photos or take video, you're there. But whenever you're not doing that, like you're just like one of my friends who's like hanging out with us. And that really stuck with me because I was like, okay, yeah, maybe there's more that you can offer beyond just like technical ability. It's just like making people feel comfortable around you and like that they want to work with you because of that. <laughs> Glad I got that. Originally, I was brought on just to do photos for Ray, but Gabe's responsibility at Hundred Thieves were much more uh, intense than mine were. But there was one shoot where like it was the first time it was just gonna be me and Ray with no Gabe. Um, and I was like, I was nervous, you know? Gabe's the connective tissue here, and he's like the more capable one. He's like an actual like cracked cinematographer and stuff. So now it's like, now I have to kind of step up to the plate and fill, fill those shoes and then also do everything else. Um, but that's how that transition happened. I like just started vlogging for her more and more. And then before it's just, she started kind of just coming directly to me. And so I saw an opportunity there where I was like, if there was any like wagon that I could hitch myself to, like a good opportunity, like, Ray is like giving me this opportunity here and I should probably seize it. She knows that she can rely on me and like I can like always like um, deliver for her. I reflect on my time at 100 Thieves really positively, but like there was like people above me who didn't really know like the culture or like the streaming space or like the content creator like ecosystem and landscape very well. And then I think they saw me like building these relationships with our content creators. And I would feel like discouraged from kind of um, nurturing those relationships by like my manager or like some of my, my coworkers. I really wanted to just go to the talent team. I was a technical director and I was like kind of just over it. They never let me do that until eventually I was like, okay, well, I'm just gonna do it myself. But one of my good friends who, <laughs> who works at a talent agency, she sent me uh, like a video of her like in a Zoom call with her coworkers and they were having a PowerPoint and one of the slideshows had me on it. The, the actual slide was like, the three pillars of like um, what talent needs to succeed. And it was like, there was this other person and there's other person and then there was me. And it literally said a March-like individual that can just like do white glove service for turnkey solutions for whatever talent needs. Here you have the talent agency themselves in their internal like PowerPoint meetings being like, we need someone like March to like do this job. So when I left 100 Thieves, I told Ray, I was like, hey, I'm not 100 Thieves anymore. And she was like, oh, like, I'll, I'll get you, I'll get you work. Immediately swooped in and was like, don't worry, I'll take care of you. So I met Will at 100 Thieves. That actually happened during COVID. And like, it kind of goes back to just being friendly and nice to people, I think goes such a long way. And so at the compound, we have these uh, streaming pods. And so Austin Show, who runs Lover Host, he's a content creator and like friends of like Will and Hassan and them. He was in town and he was like, I need somewhere to host Lover Host from. And so, 100T was like, do it from the compound, from the stream pods. And when that happens, I'm the guy that comes in to facilitate that entire production. That lover host, he brought in Will to co-host with him. And so when they were in the streaming pod, Will was like, can you watch my dog? <laughs> so I was like, sure. And so like, I was just in the compound, like living room, like on the big screen watching like lover host from the other room with like Farley just fucking hanging out. And I watched his dog for like two hours and he like really appreciated that. And at this point, I'd become pretty close friends with Will and Austin. Like we kept running into each other at like shoots and like we were just like always like really friendly. And then one day there was a hundred thieves party and Hassan was there and that was like the first time I'd like ever met him. Hassan had come to the compound a couple of times to like do some events. So like he had seen me around, like he knew who I was. All the while, Hassan and Will were doing this podcast called Fear and Molding with this production company um, that they hired that they didn't really like. So the show went on hiatus when the, when the contract ran out for the podcast. I'm still working at 100 Thieves and Will approaches me. He's like, hey, I want you to produce our podcast. I know you did a Courage and HR show at 100 Thieves. Would you do our podcast? The way he pitched it to me, he's like, yeah, you'll come. Hassan has a studio at his house. We want to do it out of his house this time because Hassan never wants to leave his house. And he's like, we want to do it out of his house this time. And like, he has a studio in there and we'll shoot it and it'll be easy. 
At the time, I did not fully realize the scope of what that meant. The studio space is just his stream setup with like a few more cameras and he's all like, yeah, I want you to build a podcast here at my stream setup that I can go transition from like being live to podcast or to podcast from being live in like minimal amount of time. But we made it work, you know, and that's what it is. I go to his house right now, 10, 15 minutes before we shoot. And I like take us from like having his PC on to being ready to shoot in like 10, 15 minutes flat. And then once we're done, I tear it down and switch it to his stream PC so he can be live another within like 10 minutes. So I got it down to like a pretty good place where the turnaround time is minimal and the production doesn't look like shit. Which is all like he was really asking for. And the numbers are good. People like the show. So I'm not we complaining. Would, we would definitely survive Apocalypse together very yeah. well. It'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. We'll there was a period of time where it was like, uncertain that it was ever going to happen. We went to, to TwitchCon EU at like, Amsterdam. <laughs> I remember Will was so pissed on that trip because he was like, I flew out to the UK just to have Hassan do nothing but stream all day and not want to like do anything else. But the plan was we'd go out to the EU with him and we would film our first episode of the podcast. We'd film some promo, we'd film our first episode. The first leg of the trip was the UK. None of that happened in the UK. So we're like, okay, well, now we're gonna go to Amsterdam. It wasn't until the very final day that we filmed something from the podcast and it all came together like in the final hour. I, again, at this point, I'm like, Hassan flew me out here. I'm still not sure he even likes me. He's probably thinking that like this was a waste because we're not getting anything done. I'm trying to like rally the two boys and so, I got in touch with this guy who had like a, a, a boat, like a boat house on Amsterdam, which is actually pretty common, like cause in the canals, people just post up there on like in their boat houses. And it's like a recording studio in the boat house. And like, I got in contact with them and within the next 24 hours, like I'm like scouting the space, piecing it all together. And like, we're shooting it like on like the roof of the boat with the insane backdrop. I still remember that night. It was like a fever dream. And again, it was kind of, it, it was very reminiscent of the Machine Gun Kelly night where I was just surrounded by like 10 content creators in like this space that like I pieced together like super last second with a set that I popped up like again, super last second with like not a lot of gear. After we wrapped on that and I was like tearing down, I was still like high off the adrenaline. We were inside the boathouse and we postmated a bunch of food and stuff and like, um, the people who ran the boathouse were so hospitable and they were so nice and they like, you know, got us some local food and everybody was eating, having a great time. The vibes were good. Hassan turns to me and he's all like, March, in the final hour, like you pulled through better than I could have ever expected. Like this was fucking sick. And that was all I needed to hear, honestly. <laughs> There's been so many weeks of that podcast where like, I'm not sure if we're gonna make it to the next week. <laughs> and then like in the final day, like Hassan's like, we're shooting today in like 10 minutes. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> And then it's like, it's like, you have to post this tomorrow. Um, but we haven't missed a week yet. Yeah, that podcast. Love it. Love those guys. Music, I feel like, has always been like my one true love. My first concert, my dad took me to go see Green Day when I was like 12 for my birthday because I was like my favorite band at the time. It's always been something that like been sort of my happy place in terms of what I find the most comfort in. I think musicians are just so cool. Like they're so, they're so talented. I've always, one, been like so envious of people that are like musically gifted, but always just admired them so much too. And I hope to just like sort of explore that like form of art a little more. I feel like music just has such a unique way of dictating your emotions. It's like if you're feeling sad and you put like a sad song on, like if you feel it like so much more intensely, or if like you're feeling like happy, but you need something to like hype you up even more, you can put something on it, like it'll like really get you pumped. Um, and I just, I've always found that so fascinating, like something so consistently and easily accessible as music. It's like, I don't think there's anything else like it. That's another thing, like this year, it's like, I want to do a lot more music stuff. And I also want to um, just revisit my community. I feel like that's kind of the final missing piece for me because I already have a bit of a foundation of a community already. And then I have this, exposure to two of the biggest streaming communities on the internet with Ray's community and Hassan and Will's communities. Um, I feel like it'd be a disservice to myself to not seize that a bit more. Why is my chat so down bad?
Why are they down bad? What are they, they down they bad? They saw a crumb of a Mauricio and they're literally oh. barking. <laughs> Something that really like sucked a lot for me at 100 Thieves was um, I was constantly having to like teach my managers and some of my coworkers about like who these content creators we were signing are or who these content creators who we're having on the podcast are or what this esport is, you know, like all, all stuff that I knew just because I was so involved in it. Um, and it, it definitely would suck like being like, why is this person like above me, you know, because they might have like a little more technical ability, but they just do not have any idea what the culture is like and I'm like teaching them. I wrote out two documents, like two pitches, two separate like pitches for Hassan and Ludwig that I then forwarded to our talent team. So at this point, this was before Ludwig's subathon. This is before Hassan blew up. I think both of them were pulling like three to five K views, if that. And I was like, both of these guys are up next. Um, they're both like really good. Hassan might be a little bit too controversial sign, but Ludwig is like a no brainer. Nobody else saw it, which is crazy. It was so glaringly obvious to anybody who was just paying attention, I think. It's just, I think the moral of the story for me has always been like, it's also validating and there's enough evidence that I know that I can just kind of bet on myself at this point and that I know like to trust myself. Trusting myself has always like kind of gotten me to the right place. There, there is some comfort in that, which I think is good. It's, it's helping me kind of like build my own personal confidence uh, more and more. Like I'd say I'm like definitely more confident these days than I ever have been. Should I like say anything else or I'm good? Okay. Like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Vote on your phones now. Was them doing one about March a good call? Was this a good call? <laughs>